For today's video we're taking a look at a Heyman Manus Model R mechanical calculator made in Germany in the 1950s. The Heyman Manus looks much like other pinwheel calculators such as this Moldivo Mentor which we looked at in a previous video. I'll put a link to that video on screen now. But the Heyman Manus isn't actually a pinwheel calculator, it uses a different system internally which we'll take a look at later on. If I want to add 476 and 929 I can do it much the same as on a pinwheel calculator by entering the first number using the levers here, so that's 476 and then turning the crank handle forwards to add that into the register. Now if I change the levers to 929 and turn the handle again it shows the result of 1405. This machine does have another cool trick for addition and subtraction though. If I press this button in on the side and do the same addition, so that's 4, 7, 6, and crank the handle again, this bar moves up after each addition to clear the input register ready to input the next number, which is of course 9, 2, 9, and turn the handle again and the input register is once again cleared. When you come to subtracting numbers on a pinwheel calculator, you just turn the crank handle backwards. But on the Heyman Manus, things are a little bit different. First you have to move this lever beneath the crank handle into the subtract position. You'll notice as I do this that the carriage moves slightly to the right. Just like that. Then you change this lever on the top to the minus position. This reverses the direction of the counter in the register. At this point I've forgotten to enter a number to subtract from. I could either put the machine back into addition mode and add a number into the register, or I could enter it using these knurled wheels on the register itself. So I'll enter 2, 3, 3, 2 and then I'll enter 2290 into the input register and now after all that I'm actually ready to turn the crank handle forwards rather than backwards as it would be on a pinwheel calculator and the 2290 is subtracted from the 2332 leaving us with the answer of 42 of course and as with addition the input register is cleared ready for another number Multiplication is much like on a pinwheel calculator, although first I need to remember to set the counter lever back into the plus setting, and the add subtract lever back into the add position, and probably most importantly pull out the pin that engages the input clearing bar, otherwise the number you're multiplying will be cleared after the first revolution of the crank handle. And now we're ready to do some multiplication. So if I want to multiply 34,303 by 7, I'll enter the 34,303 into the input register and then simply turn the crank handle 7 times. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you'll see that I've multiplied 34,303 and that's still showing in the input register by 7, which is shown on the counter, giving us the answer of 240,121 that's displayed in the output register. I can now clear the counter using the left hand lever at the end of the carriage, and then the output register using the right hand lever, and these can be used together if you want to clear both at the same time and then I can manually clear the input register using this lever that moves the clearing bar. If I want to multiply by a multiple digit number I can utilise the carriage shifting buttons. The upper button moves the carriage one place to the right for every press and the lower button moves it back to the left. So, if I want to multiply 1984 by 1812, I'll enter the 1984 into the input register, and then with the carriage all the way to the left, well actually on this machine it's not all the way to the left, 
Uh, if I click the lower button once more, the carriage moves half a place further to the left and is completely disengaged from the mechanism. If I turn the handle now, nothing will happen. So I'll move it half a step back again, and now I'm ready to multiply by 1812. So, in the units column I'll turn the crank handle two times, and then I'll press the upper button to shift the carriage one place to the right, and in the tens column I'll turn the handle once, and then shift the carriage one more place to the right, and turn the handle eight times, And finally, move the carriage one more place to the right, and turn the handle once. We're now showing 1984 in the input register, multiplied by 1812 in the counter, giving us an answer of, and we can use these little sliders to indicate the position of the commas, 3,595,008 in the output register. The Heyman Manus Model R also has a back transfer mechanism that can transfer the contents of the output register back into the input register. This can be useful for things like cubing a number. So, if I want to calculate 256 cubed, I'll enter the 256 into the input register and multiply it by 256. So, in the units column, I'll turn the crank handle six times then shift the carriage one place to the right, and in the tens column turn the handle five times. Then shift the carriage again, and finally in hundreds column turn it twice. That gives us an answer of 65,536. So to transfer that back into the input register, we move the carriage back to position one, and then manually clear the input register, but while the clearing lever is at the top, we also press this additional lever. This puts the machine into back transfer mode, as indicated by this yellow flag that appears to the left of the input register. And now, as we clear the output register, the figure is transferred up to the input register, like that. So now we're ready to multiply by 256 again, and you'll notice that on the first crank the yellow flag will disappear. So as before, in the noughts column we'll turn the handle six times, and then shift the carriage and turn the handle five times, and then shift the carriage again and turn the handle twice. And that gives us the answer, 256 cubed equals 16,777,216. And finally, we can take a look at the real party trick of the Heyman Manus, automatic division. Division uses multiple subtraction, so first I need to set the lever beneath the crank handle to subtract, and set the counter direction lever to minus, and make sure the input register clearing button is pulled out. And then finally, this lever on the front of the machine needs to be pushed in. Oh yeah, and I'll move the carriage all the way across to the right. And now we're ready to enter a number to divide, so I'll use the knurled wheels to enter 365 all the way to the left of the output register and then I'll enter 52 in the input register just to the right of this red dot that shows you where to enter your number. And lastly we'll work out where the decimal place will be in the answer, which will appear in the counter. There are 10 digits after the decimal point in the output register, and 4 digits after the decimal point in the input register. So 10 minus 4 equals 6, so there will be 6 decimal places in the answer. Right, we're now ready to crank the handle, and the machine will do the rest for us. So, here goes. The divisor is subtracted from the dividend until the register underflows. Then the carriage shifts half a place to the left and adds the last number back in to clear the underflow. Then the carriage shifts another half place to the left and subtracts again, and this continues until the carriage disconnects from the mechanism, or you stop cranking the handle. And of course, the answer is 7.019230.
When this machine arrived, there was quite a lot wrong with it. It was seized, with the crank handle stuck up in the air. These two buttons were missing, along with this one on the front. There were a couple of broken taper pins in the register that had to be extracted and replaced. And probably most significantly, half of the lever for the automatic division was broken off. So from the fragments that were left, I had to fabricate a new one, harden it, dismantle the register enough to install it, and fit the new one, and reassemble everything. But it was worth the effort, because we've now got a fully operational Heyman Manus. So now, as promised, we'll take a quick look at the mechanism inside. In fact, if we take a look at a normal pinwheel calculator first, as I move one of the levers on the input register, pins will poke out of the drum or wheel, and it's these pins that drive the intermediate gear, and in turn the register. It's these pins that give it the name pinwheel. Now, if we look at the Heyman Manus, on the surface there's not much to see as I advance the input lever. And if I crank the handle with the input lever at zero, this big gear doesn't turn at all. If I move the input lever to number one, and turn the handle again, the big gear will move one notch, turning the intermediate gear and the output register as it goes. And as you'd expect, if I move the input lever to number nine, and turn the handle, the big gear will move nine notches. The addition and subtraction on the Heyman Manus uses quite an ingenious system. In addition mode, the big gear drives directly onto this intermediate gear on the output register, moving the register forwards. As you'll see when I crank the handle. Thusly. But when the machine is in subtraction mode, the carriage moves half a step to the right, and now the big gear drives this joined pair of gears. The right hand one of the pair is now in contact with the register intermediate gear, so when I turn the handle, the register is driven backwards. And it's this system that allowed them to incorporate the automatic division functionality. As always, thanks to Jap Sherfius. It was after seeing his video featuring a Heyman Manus calculator that we began searching for one of our own. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description. I think that will do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you'll get notifications when new videos are released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.